Good evening or afternoon. Um, thank you for being here virtually. And um, this, I'm Mel Joyce Boyd, and I am a poet in this ensemble. Um, and I will be performing with my good friend Marion Hayden, who plays bass, a well known, award winning um, artist. And also, we will be complimented with. Um, Tariq Gardner, who is an activist, uh, band leader, and composer, and drummer. So we're going to do a number of poems um, by me, but first I'm going to begin by reading a poem that was written by Naomi Long Magic from her most recent collection of poetry, which is called You Are My Joy and Pain. It is a collection of love poems and was, has just been released by Wayne State University Press. And I'm going to read one of my favorite poems in the collection, uh, and it's entitled Good News. The headlines never say good morning anymore. Every day the forecast reads a chance of showers. The Tigers keep losing the ball games, and Dick Tracy is reported missing. His smashed wrist radio recovered from a burned out crater of the moon. The market has plunged again. Clad dimes and quarters have replaced the real ones. Then you ring the doorbell with the Sunday sunrise, rolled up casually in one pocket and a handful of silver coins with rare mint marks in the other. The only long magic.
attorney, Kenneth B. Cockrell. I wrote this poem after he passed suddenly in 1989. When revolutionaries are sent, the time to move is meant. There is no reproach in manner, no hesitation in diction. Your style engage the elegance of the gazelle. Against the rich profiting from our life imprisonment and their politicians petitioning for the narcotic incarceration of generations policed under stress. You argued for the defense for the resurrection of soldiers in the factories, in the streets, in the churches, holding court for the people in one long breath. We who know this, who love you, who thought with you, who triumphed with you, grieved from the gut. We share the same camp and kindle this dream called freedom. These tears that cleave our mourning inspire this fire. We seek you, convening in sweet smoke with our brothers, John Percy Boyd, Hayward Brown, Mark Evo Bethune, very near here in the next haven planning the League of Defense for our revolutionary spirits before our sentence is passed. Thank you. 
This next poem I wrote for Marion Hayden. And she and I will do a duet um, in presenting this piece. The Bass is Woman for Mary and Hayden. At a left angle tilt adjacent to her throat, Mary and mind bells with this magnificent instrument. Lift swift fingers, restraining eighth notes in cut time against bare knuckle restraints, releasing stress from neck past breast through a navel leading into a womb, gifting violet drifts like sweet rose water, brimming inside uninhibited thick hips that swing and sway, dancing on ripples of unreachable prayers. Her brown curves ground earth tones at the base of rhythm, the backbone of song. The base is woman. This next poem is entitled Eulogy for Detroit, 1967. And there's a quote from Robert Kennedy, who unfortunately was assassinated in 1968. And his comment uh, during uh, this time in response to the riot was, uh, I'm sorry, the rebellion, is repression breeds retaliation. Slap, swear, shove, injure, and threaten with weapons. People swing back, shatter car windows, and load rifles. Flames erupt, business explodes, smoke surrounds 12th and Claremont. As city and state police, bullets ripple. Apartment buildings like target practice for Vietnamese villages. U.S. Army tanks plow down boulevards. Mother and child huddle behind barricaded doors. Fear frozen in the July heat while snipers return fire into the storm. Beneath neon palm trees flickering inside smoke clouds, Police trap unarmed civilians in the Algiers Motel, an allusion to Africa or a scene in Casablanca, a film with Sam, the black piano man, playing for Bogart, the hero fighting fascism. Cooper, Pollard, and Temple, three black teenagers caught crossing the color line, aspiring pimps partying with white chicks, Caught betwixt and between the skin game and police rage, emboldened by firepower and martial law. These three young men trapped in the annex of civil disobedience 
I like extra in a movie. I already do them by the script. What I do is detained at the border without citizenship. Restrained, beaten, and murdered in the recesses of city unrest. In the aftermath, ignorance and absence of brown peers, indifferent to family or community needs or the deceased. Twelve white jurors boxed in a suburban courtroom. Beyond inner city view, dismissed witnesses and evidentiary examples and deemed murders by cops, justifiable homicide. Carl Cooper, I'll be called Fred Temple. Unarmed teenagers guilty only of the sin and dark sin. Martel now lies beneath the decay of clay, while 12th Street recalls Rosa Parks, a veteran of domestic wars, symbolic renaming of the street that marks a sacred burial ground, suffering outside city planning. Decades hence, history twisted by myths, brooding with untruths, Justifiably taking the city from survivors of 67, repossessing homes with excessive taxes, extreme insurance rates, and soaring utility bills for water too expensive to drink, even in the city of Flint, where rusted lead pipes funnel poison into kitchen sinks, while arsonists acquire acreage for real estate mobiles to house hipsters, born again Republicans and capitalist investors claiming to save us from ourselves as white folks move back in the mirror in black. Peregrine falcons once soared above skyscrapers, perched on gargoyles, guarding memories savored in museums, filled with temperate patrons searching passages to yesteryears. While we pray for the dead to wake living descendants of sons toiling in factory fields and Malawi daughters hidden in kitchens between bed linen, we are the evidence police terrorize. We are fissures in family portraits, cracks in their sacred democracy, the contradiction in their constitution the inconvenience that clots their false rhetoric like toxic smoke choking the air. This poem, this poem is a eulogy, a remembering of 67, an unearthing of bloodstained graves, reopening caskets to treat wounds enabling healing to retrieve breath currents of 43 lives rising and falling with the undertow of sanctuary seeking full measure of human remains. Our last poem is uh, We Want Our City Back, and this is a poem that I initially um, composed in the 1990s as we began to see the city um, facing all kinds of difficulties um, and problems. And uh, this poem has added and sort of grown as history continues to um, delineate these problems. So there are various actors who are identified uh, metaphorically. We want our city back. We want our 
sights on. We want our garbage gone. We want our children laying on the ground, but not with loaded guns. We want to be tired by the river and raise That's good.